so thank you for tuning in to OUM Cast, and today we are very very honored to have with us uh, a guest from the Institute of Teaching and Learning Assessment or ITLA yang bagi Professor Dr. Syahri Abdul Hamid. Thank you Prof for sharing your time with us. Okay, thank you for inviting me to be here today. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now uh, Prof uh, is actually going to share with us on a tutorials, face-to-face -face tutorials. Mm -hmm. Okay, but before we do that, before we delve into the world of tutorial Prof, mm -hmm. can you just share with us the roles and functions of ITLA? Okay, uh, IT, ITLA uh, acronym for Institute of Teaching and Learning Advancement. Advancement. Yeah, teaching and Learning Advancement. Uh, basically, uh, it came into being mm -hmm. uh, as a result of our desire mm -hmm. to enhance actually teaching and learning, mm -hmm. and of course, couple its assessment mm -hmm. at OUM, mm -hmm. in trying actually to move students' learning to a higher level in our effort actually to uh, uh, produce actually quality graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we thought that there are a lot of functions uh, that are actually, that rest actually with a couple of units at that time, like mm -hmm. tutor, TMU, tutor management units and so on. And then the related function carried by faculty mm -hmm. And then our effort to improve kita punya assessment, yeah. enhance kita punya online discussions and so on. Mm -hmm. So it is thought that that TMU mm -hmm. should be actually replaced by actually another uh, unit mm -hmm. which could actually not, not only manage as a tutor but also actually focus on the services that, really, that are provided by actually tutors and academics in particular, mm -hmm. teaching and what's more important is learning of our students mm -hmm. actually. That's why you call teaching, learning, advancement. Yeah. Implied in it also mm -hmm. uh, focus on enhancing our assessment methods mm -hmm. to ensure that students actually are brought to higher levels of learning. So it's a centralized body within OUM. Within OUM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Prof. Uh, I, I'm guessing, well, this falls under uh, ITLA, tutorials, face-to-face -face tutorials okay. and all that. And I'm sure this is a question that is one of the students' favorite. And I'm sure you've heard of this question again and again. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Prof, for the last time, perhaps, can you share with us, why are there only four tutorials in OUM? Okay. Why four? Mm -hmm. You could have also asked why five next time. Okay. <laughs> right. You you know that actually to start off, mm -hmm. the way that we deliver our program is far different from the way that it is delivered in a traditional setting. Mm -hmm. In a traditional setting, our uh, uh, lectures are delivered actually wholly face to face. We call them lectures. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, our course. The courses that we offer mm -hmm. are equivalent, similar to the courses that are offered other universities. Mm -hmm. In other universities, actually, a free credit hours mm -hmm. is delivered actually as lectures, yeah, packed mm -hmm. in 40, uh, 42 hours of lecture per semester, okay. or three hours of lecture per week for fourteen weeks. The students, they they could students could afford to spend that time because they are in campus. Mm -hmm. So when we start actually to offer actually to the working adults, mm -hmm. we, those people who have been actually with OEM earlier, mm -hmm. have also been actually uh, teaching, have been, have been, had extensive experience at the traditional universities. Mm -hmm and have been teaching to adults mm -hmm. in, in, those, in their respective universities. Mm -hmm. We see that adults, working people, mm -hmm. eh, they, could they could not afford, mm -hmm. eh, they could not afford actually to spend 42 hours of their time mm -hmm. sitting in classes, actually uh, hearing lectures. Mm -hmm. So we look at the practices of other open universities all the world and we came with the idea of a blended mode of mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. You see people, many people, mm -hmm. are aware of our blended mode of learning. Mm -hmm. uh, you have actually a blend mm -hmm. of three modes of delivery, mm -hmm. self-managed learning, 
face-to-face -face sessions and the online sessions. Now, out of these three, mm -hmm. the most important, philosophically, mm -hmm. is actually self-managed learning. Mm -hmm. Self-managed learning, because actually, uh, we empower actually our students to learn. They could not afford actually to spend that time, mm -hmm. that much of a time, like students in the traditional universities. So we, we uh, empower them actually to schedule their own learning. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have that self-managed learning. Mm -hmm. We facilitate them actually to study and on their own by providing actually support and very important are uh, the learning materials. Now, this is the self-managed learning is the central mode. Mm -hmm. We give the material, we provide them the support, they manage their learning. Mm -hmm. that, that module that we gave to them, the main one is module, mm -hmm. is basically written in a manner in which actually lectures are delivered. Mm -hmm. They read that. Mm -hmm. They can interact with, in, uh, with the materials mm -hmm. to learn. Mm -hmm. Now, we, ha we have another two modes. Those two modes are simply complementary modes mm -hmm. to support actually self-managed learning. Mm -hmm. We thought in the very beginning, uh, in our culture, uh, self-learning by itself to many is, is not complete. Mm -hmm. So actually we support them with face-to-face -face session. Mm -hmm. We thought mm -hmm. that five sessions would be good because as a working adult, mm -hmm. probably with social commitment, family commitment, and other commitments and on, they could not actually afford actually to spend all their weekends actually for study. Mm -hmm. So we came with the idea of having them to come for the face -to face session on alternate weekends. Mm -hmm. Thus, in a 14-week sessions, we thought that the 10 would be right. Mm -hmm. They come alternately. Now, the other, during that, that time, the face-to-face -face session, they are not hearing lectures. Mm -hmm. They are supposed actually to be to interact with tutors, interact among themselves and so on, discussing actually difficult concepts and so on, and tutor bringing them to higher levels of learning mm -hmm. beyond what is given in the text, mm -hmm. in the module. Mm -hmm. The online session is to bridge the gap between the two, mm -hmm. between the two face-to-face -face sessions. They may be reading on their own, then they come across difficult concepts, mm -hmm. And if they were actually to wait until, uh, then they have to wait, uh, some may have to wait for two weeks mm -hmm. before they have the opportunity to post related questions to the teacher. Mm -hmm. Thus, we have the online to bridge the gap. But however, mm -hmm. the relative role actually, mm -hmm. yes, a role of the three mode, mm -hmm. have changed. And learners' reaction actually, dependence on each one also have changed. In our system, actually in our system, unlike the traditional one, mm -hmm. the attendance at the face-to-face -face session is not compulsory. Mm -hmm. They may opt not to attend the face-to-face -face session mm -hmm. if they think that actually they can make do with just the self-managed learning. Mm -hmm. If actually the content of the model, the stated learning outcome could be achieved actually by them reading it on their own, mm -hmm. so well and good. So over the period, mm -hmm. uh, over the period, you see that uh, more and more people actually are relying actually on the self-managed learning mm -hmm. relative more, mm -hmm. and the participation in the face-to-face -face session has been decreasing. decreasing. Mm -hmm. There is there is such a trend, mm -hmm. and it becomes actually a little bit costly. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we are giving cost concentration, but I go to that the savings. The saving that is generated as a result of reducing from five to four, after all they are not attending, mm -hmm. why not channel these resources and actually enhance actually our self-managed learning? Mm -hmm. Enhance our other modes, the online session. Mm -hmm. The online session was, was a good session that actually uh, also complementing this independent very much. Mm -hmm. Because they study and their own, and then they get to, to, uh, to uh, uh, participate in online discussion with a larger community of learners. Mm -hmm. And you know, in some places, mm -hmm. uh, we have actually difficulty in getting actually qualified, experienced tutors and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. So you have noticed actually 
our face-to-face, -face, uh, our online session, the philosophy of it also has changed over time. Mm -hmm. Initially, just now I said, mm -hmm. the online session is to bridge the gap between the face to, between two face-to-face -face sessions. Mm -hmm. But however, now the online session is playing a greater role actually in actually enhancing learning by students. Mm -hmm. You imagine, for example, in remote area, like for the Sandakan and, and so on, mm -hmm. there is a lack of actually qualified and, uh, and experienced tutors and so on. Now, by having this decoupling, mm -hmm. the, the online session from the face-to-face -face mm -hmm. session, we are pulling actually students from different areas and making available at least to them mm -hmm. subject matter expert from anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. And student as through that, students get actually better facilitation facilitation from more knowledgeable and more experienced who are subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. So, so much so mm -hmm. that actually our online session now also is playing a, a primary role mm -hmm. in, in actually delivering our causes and our program. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you have, you have heard like our MET Masters in the, and MIT Masters in Structural Design and Technology is actually offered wholly online mm -hmm. and with, with tutors actually from all over the world actually. Mm -hmm. We are moving to that. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's just about the number of the tutorials? Not like the number, but actually the quality teaching and learning mm -hmm. through change in the relative role played by the other mm -hmm. two components. And, and this and the savings actually, mm -hmm. as I said, then, mm -hmm. the savings, one saving from one session mm -hmm. could be channeled to enhance the other two modes which are actually gaining their relative importance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess it's, it's breaking away from the conventional classroom. Basically. Okay. Uh, breaking away from the conventional classroom mm -hmm. and imagine making it available mm -hmm. resources from other parts of the country, from different parts of the world mm -hmm. to our students. Yeah. You right. can find that only in OUM. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Now, Prof, you've mentioned again and again the importance of having qualified tutors, mm. experienced tutors, and in OUM yeah. is actually uh, one of our number one, uh, one of our Tantri's Yang uh, President's credo. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's always about learner centeredness. It's always about our learners' best interests at yeah. heart. So one way this is translated mm -hmm. is actually in terms of our tutors. Uh -huh. So uh, can you share with us, uh, what does ITLA look for in a tutor? Uh, what are the characteristics we actually specifically look for mm -hmm. when we look for tutors? Okay. Uh, before, before I answer it, answer it directly, mm -hmm. I think I like to emphasize uh, the, the role played by our tutors. Tutors at OUM, OUM mm -hmm. plays a different role from tutors in traditional setting, mm -hmm. in a traditional university. In a traditional university, you have actually the uh, lecturers, professors and so on, conducting actually the lecture, delivering the lecture to students, and the tutors normally, mm -hmm. uh, graduate students or final year students in the bachelor degree actually, giving tutorials to the students. Mm -hmm. But in our case, the tutors play a, a different role. In, in our mode of delivery, mm -hmm. there's no lecture per se. Mm -hmm. Lect the module replaces the lecture. Mm -hmm. Be because we said that modules are really, which actually the prime, uh, the prime tools of learning mm -hmm contains actually lectures made by lecturers. Mm -hmm. Now, and you know our, our module contains actually the basic uh, information that is required out of the program. Mm -hmm. Now, what we like to do is actually now with, with time that, and I said earlier just now, in the tutorial session, mm -hmm. tutors initially were supposed actually to discuss difficult concepts but now, we want the emphasis in, mm -hmm. we want actually our tutors to bring students to higher levels of learning, mm -hmm. beyond the model. Uh, you have, for example, can you look about, about uh, learning itself, mm -hmm. uh, following blooms, mm -hmm. 
the lowest level is actually knowledge, recall and comprehension. But we want actually the, our tutors to bring them beyond that in the tutorial session, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, bringing actually uh, uh, learners' understandings to apply that knowledge, to make analysis of situations, mm -hmm. to evaluate the, the, what the implications of knowledge they have learned, mm -hmm. to synthesize knowledge and what. They have to move students to higher levels mm -hmm. of, of learning. Mm -hmm. Thus, we need actually qualified and experienced actually tutors who could facilitate mm -hmm. that face-to-face uh, -face sessions. Mm -hmm. So although we say that the qualification that is necessary, the, the, the basic qualification is necessary is a bachelor degree mm -hmm. because actually that's what actually the basic qualification of tutors in a traditional setting. Mm -hmm. But we would like actually to have tutors who are better qualified than that. That's why you look at in our remuneration plan, mm -hmm. we offer actually tutors depending on the uh, qualifications that they hold. Mm -hmm. We offer actually higher, a little higher amount for those who have masters and, and uh, higher still for those with doctorate, with uh, uh, professors and so on. Because we want to attract the qualified people, best qualified people to attract them. But beyond that, Mm -hmm. Qualification is inadequate, qualification by itself. We want them actually to be very well experienced. Mm -hmm. So these two things are very important. Mm -hmm. The correct qualification and the experience related to the subject matter that they are actually delivering in their face-to-face -face session. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. uh, we train them. Mm -hmm. Qualification and experience outside experience mm -hmm. is an inadequate if they do not understand our pedagogy. Mm -hmm. We train them the art of delivering in, uh, in yeah. our context. Mm -hmm. So for those tutors who have been with us, mm -hmm. we look for another one. When we recruit new one, mm -hmm. we look for qualification and experience. Mm -hmm. But in engaging them, mm -hmm. yeah, in, in renewing their contract, mm -hmm. we get actually the feedback from various parties, relevant five from different sources, mm -hmm. to ensure that they really could deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so those two initially, mm -hmm. qualification experience, the third one is actually whether or not they could deliver. But what is most important mm -hmm. beyond that is the commitment by the mm -hmm. And the commitment by the tutors. They have to be committed mm -hmm. to them. And uh, Prof, speaking of the feedback that you were saying earlier, feedback from different parties, uh -huh. our tutors uh -huh. and all that. Yeah? So this is actually in line with having our learners' best interests at heart. Uh, we, keep an, we, uh, we, uh, we keep an open line of communication with our learners and we empower our learners in their learning process and our learners even have the power to uh -huh. evaluate their tutors. Sure. Yeah? And can you elaborate on this, Prof? What does tutor evaluation mean? How does it work? Okay. In, in the, for those who are with us already, mm -hmm. whether we engage them, eh, whether we engage them actually for subsequent semesters, mm -hmm. as I said, eh, depends on positive feedback. Three main sources of feedback we look to. Uh -huh. One, of course, mm -hmm. there's, there's learners themselves, because only the learners actually uh, knows actually the uh, uh, tutor well because if they have attended actually the session, they have been spending five or four weekends actually with the tutors. Mm -hmm. They are in a position because they are the one who interact with the tutors. Mm -hmm. So we got the feedback from them. And also, we here, ITLA, each semester, get the cooperation of the faculty to send academicians to monitor, mm -hmm. uh, monitor the, on a sampling basis, they conduct a tutorial session all over the country okay. uh, on a sampling basis. They, these uh, uh, academicians, they uh, observe the delivery of the uh, tutorial sessions by uh, the uh, selected tutors to see that they are actually uh, delivering as what they are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. 
this is the second second source. Mm -hmm. And then the other feedback is actually feedback from the directors and the administrators themselves. So these three we take into account in uh, the, the positive feedback mm -hmm. before actually we decide whether a particular actor will be actually re-engaged for staff during the semester. Mm -hmm. It's very important in our effort to continuously provide actually the quality uh, delivery to our learners. It's very important actually, this is a very important tool for our learners because there's this very, well, it's very hard for OUM to monitor each and every tutor. Yes, right? yes, yes. And we can only grow and go no progress with, uh -huh. their, um, with their help. All right. But Prof, don't you agree that it's actually a very real worry that when it comes to tutor evaluation, mm -hmm. especially in terms of anonymity, and many of our learners worry that mm. their identity will be revealed and if they give, say, you know, negative or unfavorable feedback uh -huh. on their tutors then it will reflect badly on their grades or whatnot. Can you, uh, how would you address this concern? They shouldn't actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you and me have gone through this. Okay. Uh, and we, the way that we, uh, I think, mm -hmm. at least actually, uh, uh, the way that we do when I was a lecturer mm -hmm. and also when I was a student actually mm -hmm. is actually for us actually to respond on the questionnaire uh, on the questionnaire hard copy mm -hmm. which are actually the district and uh, collected actually by the rep actually and uh, and we don't know what happened after that mm -hmm. the, the 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 process and so on mm -hmm. uh, high risk of what you have said occurring because mm -hmm. that hard copy if it is given actually to the to lecture. the lecturer, mm -hmm. the lecturer can uh, uh, would be able actually to determine who gives what. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after one uh, semester, they could more or less understand uh, the read actually who wrote what. Mm -hmm. But there is no cause of concern in our case. Mm -hmm. Our online evaluation by actually the nurse are actually online. Mm -hmm. Online. Mm -hmm. They don't have to read, they don't have to write actually their name. They just fill in and, and submit. Mm -hmm. right? And submit. And it is submit, then it is processed. Mm -hmm. They are not given actually uh, individual sheets, are not actually distributed. No. Mm -hmm. At ITLA, we process the, uh, the, uh, the uh, questionnaire that has been actually submitted by actually the learners. Mm -hmm. And when we report the findings, Yes, we summarize it. Mm -hmm. yeah, we summarize it into a number of categories. Mm -hmm. And when we report, actually, we report in terms of number of students. Mm -hmm. Not who, but actually the number of students who responded actually in the same manner. We give the same actually response. Mm -hmm. And by calculating the averages. So number and average is just simply what is reported. Mm -hmm not the identity of anybody and it is very it, it, i mean it's a very real concern and it's very very misleading even uh -huh. misguided worry perhaps uh -huh. and, and and it's very important that our learners understand which we prof that that we need this feedback we need this input to actually improve oum uh -huh. mm -hmm. they they shouldn't because actually that report mm -hmm. that questionnaire mm -hmm. which is actually submitted actually by the learners online mm -hmm. will never go to anybody else except to the res responsible person at ITB. Mm -hmm. It will never go to the tutor. Mm -hmm. The tutor will receive actually the feedback. Mm -hmm. What well, this hasn't happened yet for example uh, uh, as it's now it is mainly consumed by us mm -hmm. uh, in deciding whether actually the tutor should be renewed. Mm -hmm. uh, the other the other components where actually we have that uh, feedback by the academic tool monitor, mm -hmm. uh, they get instant feedback. The tutor. Mm -hmm. I do. I also do that that monitoring. Normally, at that monitoring, I will uh, talk to the uh, relevant tutor, mm -hmm. uh, and then to give them actually my feedback. Hopefully, they could improve. Our purpose is not to punish them, the teachers. Mm -hmm. We want them also to develop. Mm -hmm. We want them to improve. Mm -hmm. What we are thinking now, we are doing immediately now, mm -hmm. we are actually uh, trying to come up with an aggregate measure. I see. Because I told you we have three sources of information uh -huh. 
and then we are we are developing actually a specific questionnaire. We have the questionnaire for for the for the learners. Mm -hmm. We have actually the questionnaire uh, that is that are used actually by the academic academician who monitor. Mm -hmm. We are also coming up actually with the questionnaire to be used by actually the directors at Amnesty. And what we hope, we come up with an aggregate measure. Mm -hmm. An aggregate measure which we hope in the future we will be able to rank. I see. Okay. Right? It come up as an index mm -hmm. that ranks actually the, the performance of the tutors mm -hmm. without names. Mm -hmm. Without name, except that we will give the, to the tutor concern, we put name, and then they will see how many tutors are above and below them. Mm -hmm. I think that is very an ob objective kind of mm -hmm. assessment. So, Prof, um, well, you mentioned earlier about the four tutorials. We have only four tutorials mm -hmm. and our learners are worrying that they only have four tutorials. And it's very, very important to them to actually get the best of this out of these tutorials. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your advice to our learners, Prof, in terms of making the best out of, out of their tutorial sessions? Uh, I've been saying, mm -hmm. right from the very beginning, mm -hmm. 2001. Okay. <laughs> Uh, learners have to come uh, when they go actually to a face-to-face -face session they have to come prepared mm -hmm. read the materials mm -hmm. all right read the materials on their own first mm -hmm. try to understand mm -hmm. then when they go to the face-to-face -face tutorial session be prepared really, to interact mm -hmm. to involve actually in the discussion if they have, as I said just now, difficult concepts and that they could, couldn't understand when they were reading the modules on their own, mm -hmm. that's the time at them to seek clarification personally, directly from the tutors. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think this uh, has to do with, this is also related to uh, quality learning. What I would like to see also, when they go actually to tutorial session, they will be able actually to reach higher levels of learning. Mm -hmm. Higher levels of learning. What I would hope is that when they go to the tutorial session, that the tutors actually would be able to facilitate them mm -hmm. to apply the knowledge, mm -hmm. to bring them to higher levels, next higher levels of analysis. So they have to be prepared to that. But this needs actually the cooperation of both actually tutor and learners. Mm -hmm. Tutor, tutor who can facilitate them mm -hmm. to move to higher levels learning and learners who are well prepared. Mm -hmm. You think, you, you imagine actually our learners, mm -hmm. although they do not have actually the degree yet, but they have a vast amount of experience with them. Mm -hmm. Relevant experience, because when we admit students, we take them actually on the basis of their prior experience. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if they, have, they come there with prior experience, mm -hmm. they could readily be moved actually to that higher level. So they are in a position. Mm -hmm. That's, I, think, that is, I think if they do that, mm -hmm. then I think our, our objective, of producing quality graduates actually will be there. Mm -hmm. If I can relate that, mm -hmm. see, the, our final exam, mm -hmm. the format of our, our final exam has changed mm -hmm. from what it was before. Mm -hmm. See, our final exam now consists of a three-part final paper. Mm -hmm. Part A, Part B, Part C. Mm -hmm. Part A, answer all. Part B, Three answer two, mm -hmm. part C two answer one. Mm -hmm. That part A is to test, yeah, to test actually students mm -hmm. their understanding of the knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge, recall, comprehension will be tested there. B, at the higher level of learning, application and analysis. Mm -hmm. C is evaluation and synthesis. What I would like to see actually in the tutorial session is that they have actually the opportunity to actually to relate their understanding mm -hmm. to that domains of learning, higher levels of learning. Mm -hmm. And I think if the two parties cooperate, then I think 
uh, the students' understanding of Tuan Bahtun and would be much better. And our desire of actually producing quality would be actually attained. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like we'll come to the end of the segment, Prof. Thank okay. you so much for spending some of your time and your advice, your expertise with us. Mm -hmm. And I hope this is not the last time you'll be with us on our radio OEM. Thank you so much. I enjoy actually the, uh, the interview and I hope actually uh, this would be of and what we have said would be discussed would be of benefit to our members. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.